it did and it didn't. Let me put it that way. I was working with a pretty good coach at that time who I, I was pretty confident in knowing that he, um, you know, that he, he knew what he was doing. Um, and I, I realized that I did not know what I was doing. And I'm going to put that out there for all authors. Whatever you are writing, what, whatever um, business that, you know, you choose to go into with your writing, whether it be, you know, just publishing independently on your own or you just allow someone else to do that for you, you need to know your business. Um, know a little bit about what you're doing so that you can at least know the language. I didn't know the language. I hired a lot of people who knew more than I did. And so, yes, it was exciting being a best-selling author, but it came at a price. Um, mm -hmm. and, and you don't have to necessarily go the route that I did um, or anyone because you just have to know what's being put before you. It's a big difference in self-publishing and publishing traditionally. And what I mean by that is if you go, by, go under a traditional publisher, you need to read that contract and be very, very detailed in reading it, or you need to make sure that you have a literary attorney, um, someone who knows how to read those um, contracts and how not to get you entangled. So I, I, that's a lot to say about whether I was happy or not. I am a best-selling author today, but I'm going to say again, it came with a price. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and one that I would rather warn someone else to stand back, look at the situation and assess it, ask questions. And, and I would say don't get so excited about the title. Know what it entails before you get into it. Oh, yes. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. I, see, I see that a lot myself where um, I'll come up and somebody will come to me and they, they'll be like, uh, well, Coco, I need your help on this. After they then went and done something with somebody else, <laughs> then they'll mm -hmm. come to me. And I will tell them, I'll be like, look, you're going to have to get a lawyer. You're going to get have to get somebody to fight for you. Because I've seen this not only happen with writers, but I've seen it happen with um, writers in music as mm -hmm. well. So um, you gave some good information out there. Uh, about, you know, making sure you understand that contract and having somebody that does have a con that, that I'm sorry, that does understand contracts before you sign anything. That is so important. And I appreciate you putting that out there for those of my listeners that may be listening who are authors or thinking about becoming an author. You got to know your rights. You got to speak business language and whatever, um, you got to speak your writing language, whatever it is that you're doing. You got to have some knowledge of that, and not and don't be afraid to hire people. I like that too. That you said it came at a price. You had to get mm -hmm. people on your team in order to get Absolutely. to where you was. Wow, mm -hmm. how important is it to put together a good support team? Oh, absolutely. That's that's number one. A number one. Uh, your team must be knowledgeable. In the background, that whatever it is that your your business is, they have to have a, a knowledge. You have to have a good accountant because I'm gonna tell you something about being a creative writer. I, I get so engrossed in the creative part of it that I don't do well with the business background. My husband does that. He is the business guru in our family. I'm gonna tell you, and um, he keeps track of all the things that we need to do in that area. I don't even handle the money that much when I'm out doing workshops and things of that nature. He allows me to be free, and, and I don't have to think about collecting the money as much. I, You know, he does all that. So your, mm -hmm. when I say team, yes, you, it's very important. Um, your team needs to know your flow. They need to know your vision. They need to be able to buy into your vision. And it's not good just to write someone a check. They really need to be all in. And you can tell whether they're about, and I'm going to use some slang, about that life, okay? You can tell whether they're really <laughs> about what you're doing. Yeah. Because That's it. if they're not, your stuff will come up raggedy. I'm gonna be, and you know, I don't know any other way to say it. You can get professional with it if you want to, but honestly, you know, the bottom line is the raw truth is, if they're not for you, then they are against you. I so. know that's right. Mm -hmm. That that is so true. It will come up raggedy. Stuff will come up missing. Somebody yeah. won't be doing something over here. Somebody doing too much over here. Yeah, get that team. Y'all bet. Y'all need to send uh, 
Minister Shanda a donation for that. <laughs> she already hit a workshop right here on Who's Who interview. <laughs> All right. So, so October 19th, you are coming back to Troy, North Carolina. Tell us about the Creativity Me workshop that's going to be going on that day. Oh, yes. I, listen, I'm super excited about the workshop. We have put this thing together for almost two years now. Seriously, this, in fact, this is going on the second year of Creatively Me. And um, basically, the way this coloring book started is not how it ended, and I'm so thankful for saying that. It started out as just I wanted to create a coloring book, just any coloring book for girls, and I had it in my mind that I was going to do one for boys as well. Well, I still would do the boys' coloring book, but the girls' coloring book, took me well over a year to plan and then another year to try to get it on the road. So you can see why the boys color book is not up and going yet. Mm-hmm. Um, basically I am going to definitely tell you it was spiritual for me this one. And it's probably until this point, one of the most spiritual books that I've written. And, and I'm going to say that because it took me through a journey This book and my very first book, that is. The first book, I got my pain on paper. This this last uh, book that I just wrote, the newest book, The Creatively Me, it allowed me to identify my pain, and it allowed me to own the fact that I needed to release some things. Now, let me explain that. Many times we can have things bothering us, and we learn how to self-medicate and cope. We don't really own the fact that it's really actually there. We, we, we cover it with all kinds of things. And over time, I had learned how to cover my pain. Writing was good for me, but, it, but, but you can even, as the scripture tells us, your good can be evil spoken of. Uh, mm-hmm. In that, what I was doing, you know, I did the writing. I went through the motions of it. I hired some of the best people. I have some very creative people on my team, and I've worked with some great people. But when Creatively Me started uh, last year, and I wanted to promote it and put it out there, the Lord would not allow me to do it because he, he allowed me to see the book was not finished. Now, anything that is not finished, the Lord doesn't want you to give him half of something. He wants all or none. And from the, this time last year, it really wasn't this time last year, it was a little bit earlier, I went on Facebook Live, and I held up the rough draft of Creatively Me. And I even did a pre-order for it. It, The pre-order went okay, but I still had people waiting for well over a year for that book because I had to explain to them how it wasn't ready yet. In a nutshell, this is why it wasn't ready. I had to forgive some people. I had to release, ask God to release me from some things that were hidden so far down in there that I'm going to be honest, I didn't know what that meant. And as I started to make, yes, as I started to draw each individual picture of creatively me, the Lord spoke through every individual picture. It started out being about 25 pictures. I ended up with about 65 to 75 pictures in this book, which doesn't seem like a lot, but each one has a story. You're going to five different continents. You're doing a tea party, a make-believe tea party. And while you're there, you're learning a bit of history. But it's a mother and a daughter's trip. So it's designed for mothers and daughters to take the trip together. It's also not designed so that you throw this coloring book away or tear the pages out. It's designed so that you can write love notes to mom. Mom can write a love note back to the daughter. And you can keep personal pictures in there together of you and mom. It's, it's just set up for all of that. Now, I started the workshop, and I don't want to let too much about out about that. But to wrap up the workshop part of it, I came to Montgomery County because that's where, again, Montgomery County, North Carolina, is uh-huh. where my mother lives. <laughs> my mom lives in Montgomery County, right? All right. So, <clears throat> so the book is dedicated to my mother. And with doing that, you know, the workshop and her being there, the whole part of it is, in the beginning, I will give you this and wrap it up, is a part that deals with sunflowers and her favorite, my mom's favorite flower is the sunflower. So at the beginning of the book, it has a dedication page to her. 
but it also says, you know, keep your face turned toward the sun. How many of us know that sunflowers turn toward the natural S-U-N, but the scripture and the, and the part of this is to keep, you know, to encourage everyone to keep their face turned toward, you know, heaven. Um, so when I say I use the books to evangelize, that's an example of how I do it. But when I do the workshop, the workshop would be to explain to people, really it's going to be about um, looking really down inside yourself and not to capitalize, highlight your mistakes as much as you would your successes. And he would have to look at the book in order for me to explain how that's going to work. But it's not really one of those coloring books that you want to pick up and just say, like, let's just color. It must be taught and explained, or you will miss the whole essence of what the book is about. Wow. That is deep right there because we are in a time <laughs> where uh, – you know, I'm I'm so glad that it encourages the mother and daughter relationship to do it together. Mm-hmm. And I can hear, like, forgiveness in the book. I can hear it, you know, and I can feel it, you know. Mm-hmm. Like I already know this book already. Well, I'm going to get to know it because I'm coming. <laughs> oh, I'm good. <laughs> I am coming. And it, it just listening that you describe it, it, it just seems like a journey that, a lot of us need to go on together with our mm-hmm. mothers. So it's a lot mm-hmm. of children out here and adult children that are still wounded by things that their mothers had done. Um, me, myself, I have went through a lot of things with my mother. And as you say, you keep looking up, you keep praying, you keep forgiving. Mm-hmm. And that stuff does need to come out because eventually it will surface at the wrong time. And so I thank God for your your book, not only, and you see how the gift is working, not only are you writing, but you are tapping into the heart of people. Mm. That's what you're doing. You're, you're, you're pulling into their heart to, so that they can get purified. So this is a beautiful thing that you are doing for Montgomery County, North Carolina, and you didn't have to come <laughs> back, but you did. <laughs> oh, yes, I, I did. It. <laughs> so is there any particular age range that it's going to be? It is not. And and you know what? When I tell you the Holy Spirit designed this book from cover to the cover, I mean, from front to back, it is absolutely no age group. And it has a section in here for, for toddlers, even a scribble section. Wow. So if I your think... child is small, yeah. Mm-hmm. Again, think... if your child is, like, small, if you have a daughter, uh that's even a son, really. You can l- allow them to scribble, and then as time goes on, you know they could do the the other part portions of the book. It's it's really age appropriate from, you know, the time they can pick up a crayon or something to scribble with until you know adults. Uh huh. Yeah. That is awesome. So, do they need to bring anything with them? Just themselves. That's it. That's awesome. <laughs> that yeah. is so awesome right there. And I think I think that your um, books are going to continue to grow, and I think we're going to end up seeing some of them in the mental health field as well. Mm-hmm. Thank you. That's, that's what I am seriously sitting here, and I'm like, you know, this is a healing moment not only for you, but it's people out here who need this healing too, and when they come in contact with your book, it's going to help lead them to it as well. Mm-hmm. So um, mm-hmm. before we go, let me ask you, uh, do you got any upcoming projects, any upcoming tours or anything, any more book stop? Um, We are working on another book. Now, our pink signature, um, A Woman's Touch, is in the making. Um, but, again, our time is not God's timing, and he allowed us to put that book on hold for a little bit to write a manual for reviving families. Again, in the mental health, in the healing area, um, it is Battlefield Tactics. The name of that book is Battlefield Tactics and Life Strategies. So the title itself should say a lot. It does. Um, <laughs> yes. Yes. So you see where we are now. Actually, we're being led and governed by the hand of God in our writing. What we want to do, we're learning that that is not necessarily what the Lord wants us to do. Again, I wanted to release Pink Signature in August. Definitely wanted it out by October. We're still doing that book, and it's not canceled. But the Lord says do the manuals first. 
So, yes, you will hear more um, upcoming projects and workshops. We're going 